daggers at me Letting it be known you're not impressed I never fail at failing all your tests Don't be so proud Good. Hey guys, it's Mike from Wish Vlog Entertainment. I'm here with Paul from Silverstein. Can I ask you the most basic question first? Sure. How's Warp to us? Hot and uh, really just awfully hot. <laughs> awfully hot. Oh, today. It's the... Yeah, today's actually the first day of the entire tour that has been bearable. Bearable? Well, that's good. Yeah. And fun, that's, that's what I like. Yeah. It is fun, not to say it's not fun, it's <laughs> very hot. Uh, what's your favorite song to play live? Uh, stuff off the new record is more fun for me. Just God, it seems a little like bouncier, a little groovier, a little like less demanding from a you know, technicality standpoint. It's a little easier to play and a lot more fun. Uh, what do you miss most about home when not waiting an hour in a catering line to eat a meal three times a day. Yeah, Imagine that. The ability to just walk up to a thing and get food from it, like a fridge or you know, a restaurant. That, that I miss a lot. I can imagine. Uh, what is your best and then your worst tour experience? Man, like overall? Overall. See, as like a general thing, the worst part about touring is sleeping in a moving vehicle. Because the longer the tour gets, the less you sleep. For example, don't think I've slept in like three days. So that's a thing. And then, so that's maybe like the worst part of it, is the moving part. The best part of it is uh, that you live in a moving thing. You get to go to a new city every day. So that's nice. It's really nice to travel and sleep in places. Uh, I know you recently had a CD come out within the last year. Yeah, February. How was the uh, how was the reception? Incredible, really good. Yeah, it's been, it was like critically really, really well received. I think the best, most acclaimed Silver Sea record so far, which is great after you know six full legs. And, um, see food. You get it in a little box. And it's just like why? It sucks. Anyway, I'm really upset about the air today. As a vegan, they're not very common for me. I had a very weird. But, um, what were we talking about? The new record. Yeah, the new record's been great. Fans seem to like it. On the play live, always goes a little well. Do you have a pre show ritual? Anything you do before every show, every time you play? Yeah, I do actually. I am. Um, apart from, I've, I've got like a um, fairly bizarre finger warm up thing I do with the guitar, but that's boring. The more important thing is that at the last possible second, like when the intro is rolling, especially on Wood Tour, I run to have a cigarette. <laughs> And I can get like maybe like half of it in right before I have to like run on stage. I don't know why. It's like I'm gonna have a bad show if I don't do it. <laughs> What's the first thing you do after you're done playing at the Halls of Um Usually I try to kill myself, but if I can't do that, I um, I take first stock of how wet I am and if it's safe to put my phone in my pocket. <laughs> Rarely is that the case, so then I have to give my phone to someone with a dryer pocket, which is hard to do on the time. And after doing that, I have a cigarette, and then uh, I, I help pack my stuff up. After the whole day of music tours or any show, what do you guys do? Do you down? Do you just relax? Depends where. I mean, uh, well, Camden, Philadelphia. I wish, I want to go into the city. There's a restaurant I love in Philadelphia called Memphis Tapper. It's one of my favorite restaurants in the world. And uh, I want to find a way there. I don't know how much a cab's going to cost. Phones are useless all day. I don't know if you found them. Yeah. You cannot use a cell phone on war tours. So, so there's so many cell phones in one spot. I mean, so, so basically, yeah, anytime after 11 or any time, and from 11 to 8 p.m., you basically have no chance of Googling it or but you sit around and uh, relax. Uh, do you prefer a festival, like Warp Tour, or no. like a small, small show? Never. Sure. I do not like festivals. Don't like it. It's less intimate. That and you're never, like, I like, my favorite part about touring, as I said before, is the cities. I like to be in a new city and, you know, find the good things in that city. And when you play a festival, you're never, well, I shouldn't say never, but very rarely be in a city. It's not like a club tour where you open the door of the bus and you're like, downtown Philadelphia, and it's fucking awesome. Instead, it's like, you open the door of the bus and there's another bus and another one and another one, and it goes on like that for like ever. And usually it's grass, it's a billion degrees, you can't get air conditioning, you can't go get anything. You want to get coffee? Go wait an after hour line. That's what you get. So I hate grass. Very bitter. You're asking me this on a bad time. You asked me this two weeks ago. Maybe I went a little different answer. Yeah. Well, a question about just the Camden Wolf tour. I know the Camden specifically has the two stages set up on the uh, in the amphitheater. Uh, that's rare. It's that's rare. Do you like it or do you not? No, it's not. Uh, that that's it's just very, I you know you need to make sure your stuff works. But I don't. I mean, I'm trying to check my guitar. The sound guys being like, give me the guitar. And I'm like, oh, cool. They're not really playing right now, and I don't want to just like ring a guitar through his talking. Right. 
And uh, so, the I don't know, it's very confusing. Normally they don't put the main stage like that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was asking. Um, do you guys play the same set all throughout World no. Tour? No. I feel like we're one of the few bands that doesn't do that. We play a different set every day. Every yeah. single same. You know, like you keep certain. So is there any certain song that you keep in every single set? Yeah, yeah. There's there's like 20, 20 songs that we probably pull from, and I'd say at least three of them we play every day. Like the, with the catalog as big as ours, we are kind of obligated to play a certain set that I will not. Only people guess things. What do you do when you're not writing or touring? Uh, writing a different stuff. <laughs> Always writing something. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I live in Toronto, so I, I like riding my bike around. Hopefully, I get a month or two of summer when we get back. I can sit in the park and uh, see my girlfriend. What's your absolute favorite city to play? Uh, in the world? Yeah, anywhere. I don't know. I haven't really cataloged them, but I, I think craziest shows in memory like Cologne, Germany is always insane. Um, we just played Moscow um, at the beginning of this year. It was like some of the craziest fans I've ever seen. Um, in the States, Philly is usually the best show, I think. Actually, everything in the Northeast are really What about uh, playing at home, like in Canada, Toronto? Toronto's great. It's always, it's Toronto. It's like, it's, it's always fun. Yeah. Who's your favorite superhero? Well, I don't I hate superheroes. I hate them all. What's, uh, my, my favorite superhero is, um, did you ever read this uh, magazine called The Onion? No. Okay. The Onion is a fake news site that looks very legitimate. And uh, do, you, do you remember something with like the uh, MacBook wheel? It was like a MacBook that had like the iPod wheel as a keyboard. Do you remember seeing something like that? That was an onion joke. Like, they put all that in. So that's what they do. Anyway, I think they tweeted about a superhero uh, called the Incredible Businessman, and he makes ten times the salary of your average man. That's my favorite superhero. That's what I would be too. Right? Uh, if you weren't a band, what would you be doing? This is a tough question. When I wasn't in a band, I was uh, still writing songs and working in a restaurant. Well, you do much better than you're doing your best. Better here, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Less money, but. <laughs> Who's your favorite band of tour? I mean, you still have Why not? Yeah, I think pretty easy to get along with. So we always like we get down pretty good with pretty much every band we play tour with. But um, I mean, we love the Chariot guys, like really close friends of ours, um, and they're great to watch. I think that's like an important thing too. Like how much do I? I watch the Chariot. Let Live too. I watch all of them every day. Those are great guys. Those are my two favorite bands on this tour. So that's what are you I'm just in the crowd or your special by watch live stage? Depends. Depends. Usually I'm trying to watch. They're both like I don't know if you watched either band, but they're. It's a big show, so I like to stand back as much as I can, but sometimes you get little nuances from backstage that you don't usually get. Alright, after so many years, do you still love music? Do you still love it, or is it just wearing you? I've heard some people say about how much the music scene after a while starts growing. Yeah, I mean, I don't listen to music the same way anymore. I don't listen to I don't listen to any band. Someone you know, if I'm gonna listen to music, it's like I'm gonna listen to, listen to instrumental jazz or like old Motown stuff or you know 50s pop. I don't listen to any of these at all. Before that happened, who was your biggest uh, influence? Um, there was a band that was on Victory Records a long time ago called The Sleeping. They're from New York. I used to love The Sleeping. I thought they were doing something very cool. I used to like a band called Gatsby's Man and Dream quite a bit. You know, fearless, I think. Um, I was like the like weirder inside of bands. And, like metal bands are really like watch. And, like refused is probably my favorite art for me. Like, things like that. When you were first getting into music, was your family support yeah. or 50-50? 50-50, or like kind of do what you want, but yeah, my my uh, my mom is a piano teacher and so she was I was she like put me into music, but my uh, my old man did not see it as a viable career. But now he's his words and he's very supportive actually. Incredibly supportive. So. <laughs> Alright, and one last question. When you guys are writing, do you guys start off with lyrics and then write music to it, or music and then lyrics? Um, well, there's a few different writers in the band. Like, I write, Shane writes, and Josh writes, and so now Paul's even writing, and Bill's considerably starts. Everyone kind of does it differently. I, because I don't sing very much, I don't really start with words at all. I, generally, I think, for me, the way I've written every song is melody and chords will come 
it's it's basically at the same time. Back. So like, I won't even, it has to like be a perfect storm. It's like I have this idea for a melody and I already can hear the chords that are underneath it. And then I kind of just go from there. But I never really, I don't even present Shane with the melody usually. I just let him do his thing. And on the last record, I think four times, four times I did that to him. And like three of them, he thought of basically the same thing I thought. So, yeah, I trust him. Lots, like half still. Yeah. Yeah. Well, really? Have a good time on the rest. Thanks very much. Thanks for <laughs>